Few developments have helped government agencies innovate faster and more effectively than the evolution of the cloud. Hi, I'm Wyatt Cash with Scoop News Group, and here to talk about the cloud's impact on the public sector is Chris Johnson, Deputy Chief Technology Officer at the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency. Chris, thank you so much for joining us. Hey, Wyatt, appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me with you today. So let me start by asking, how has the cloud enabled your agency to make significant improvements in the services it delivers to the public or your agency's federal customers? So one of the things that I that I absolutely love about NGA, and it's it's not a well known fact, uh, but we have some pretty significant um, public facing missions that we support, and one of those is our notice to mariners uh, for safety of navigation. Uh, mm-hmm. That's not just something that we do for uh, the U.S. government or for our allies. It's a service we provide free of charge uh, to the whole world, uh, to every every ship, every mariner that's out on the seas um, has access to to our products. Um, in order to make sure that they're aware of dangers um, and, and the latest when it comes to uh, the, the shipping channel. So it's a really exciting mission. And we really used cloud to kind of transform how we deliver that mission to those customers because it is one of our statutory mission. So it's, it's, it's defined in law. And it's one of the few that we have that actually has availability requirements, uptime requirements that go along with it. Um, you know, historically, looking back at it, it was it was a challenge, techn- te- technologically speaking. Um, and with cloud, we were able to leverage a content distribution network, a CDN, um, in order to host that data globally, uh, to, to minimize any possible disruption uh, to those to those customers. Uh, we never could have done that. Um, in a traditional on-prem data center um, uh, 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 implementation. So cloud really fundamentally allowed us to to, to maintain that data set and get it out there to the users around the world where they are and when they need access to that data with with no disruptions. Well, uh, what were the primary technology challenges that um, that your agency was facing in delivering these kinds of services to the public? how, how did the cloud actually help you overcome them? Yeah, so for, for GeoN, I, I think that we always have three kind of ever-present uh, real big technology challenges, and that is uh, speed, agility, and availability, right? We're, we're an intelligence agency, so getting the, the data into the hands of the people that need it as quickly as possible, that's, that's really important. Um, making sure it's always available, really important. Uh, being able to respond to mission demands in real time, really important. Uh, cloud kind of changed that for us a little bit. You know, we're, we're in the process of adopting and moving toward a, a service-oriented architecture, right? A, a service-oriented architectures are much easier uh, to implement in, in a cloud environment. Uh, they, they lead to things like automation, right? Uh, automation as a result of the standards that, are, that come with adopting a service-oriented architecture. That automation is key. You can take previous missions or business functions that were separated and that were kind of stovepiped off and you can now bring them together and and rapidly um, deliver additional capabilities to those customers. Well, if you could, maybe could you describe a couple of key outcomes that the cloud has allowed NGA to achieve compared to where you were maybe just a couple of years ago? Yeah, one of the big ones for us was a, what I'll call it, a day one development environment, right? So historically speaking, when when we go out and we contract for services and we get developers on board, there's a very lengthy onboarding process in order to get those developers all of the accesses they need to the various uh, systems and accounts and emails. Um, It could take weeks sometimes to get them up and running. What cloud has allowed us to do is to build an environment for those developers that requires just local level government approval. And so the developers can start coding on day one. They can start working right away and delivering value back to the government and more importantly to those mission customers um, instead of having those weeks longs of lag time uh, while we uh, while we bring them up to uh, up to speed. Um, you know, another really key thing is the ability to, to build and destroy daily or, or even more frequently than that, right? As we look at the world of, of DevSecOps, as we look at, you know, things that are offered by infrastructure as a service and containerization, we can do things so much faster than we used to be able to do in a traditional physical environment in an on-prem data center where you could just destroy an environment. This isn't working or we've got a problem. We can instantly roll the whole thing back 
um, or deploy an entirely new deployment in a matter of seconds instead of the, the months, if not years, it would have taken historically to do those things, having to bring in physical devices into a data center. That sounds really impressive and makes so much sense. Um, lastly, Chris, what, what were maybe one or two key lessons or maybe even surprises that you experienced moving to the cloud? And where do you plan to adopt additional cloud services next as a result? Yeah, so I'll say two of the, the big things that we noticed as, as we made our journey, and it, it was, it's a journey, it's a journey that we're all still on really uh, into cloud was, and, and this problem still exists today. There is still a very large misconception with a large group of stakeholders that cloud is a technology model, right? It's not, it's a business model. Um, you can go and build a cloud in your own on-prem data center if you want to. Um, the questions about going to cloud and whether or not a particular mission or business function should go to cloud really need to resolve around business questions like cost, risk, those types of things. Um, another big issue we had was managing the expectations of our customers uh, and our users. The, the government clouds that exist don't necessarily have all of the cool bells and whistles and services that are available in those public clouds on day one but everybody wanted them. And we were definitely not prepared for the overwhelming response for those services. Uh, and it takes a while to get those services migrated from a public cloud into the government cloud. Uh, so just kind of having those processes in place ahead of time was, a, was kind of a key lesson for us uh, because users will absolutely want those services. Well, I can imagine why they would. Um, well, uh, Chris Johnson, thank you so much for taking a few minutes to share your insights uh, at, at what the NGA has learned in using the cloud and, and kind of some of the ideas that you have about moving forward. So thank you so much for being with us. Hey, thanks a lot, Wyatt. Appreciate it.